Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Certainly, we do thank God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his grace, and for his love. Well, it is Super Bowl Sunday, y'all. Amen. And I know many of us don't have a dog in the hunt, but we do celebrate Yes, with everyone else, the two teams that have made it thus far, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, amen. And I'm not really going for either one. Of course, Kansas has Pat Mahomes, who's actually from East Texas, close to Tyler, right outside Tyler. So I may be rooting for the Chiefs because my cousin is a Chiefs fan. And one of my new best friends is a Chiefs fan. He may be looking for the Tyrone Carpenter. Amen, amen. But we're here today to lift up the name of Jesus. We're living in some perilous times. We're living in some times where things are unpredictable. You don't know what can happen from day to day. So many things are uncertain. So many things are unsure. But one thing that we as believers have that we can rely on, and that's God, his faithfulness, and his word. God's word is a solid rock. The Bible says, build your life on a firm foundation. Build it on something that's solid, something that can withstand the storms of life, can withstand the rain and the wind, can withstand the problems and circumstances that all of us have to encounter. Don't build your life on sand. Anything other than Jesus Christ, the songwriter said, all of the ground is sinking sand. So therefore, our hope, our joy, our lives are based upon what God has said. And so as believers, we know that's where our trust come from, our strength come from, our hope come from. It's all in the Lord. And that's why we can still praise Him and thank Him during perilous times. And the world won't understand it. No, they won't. How can you still praise God? How can you come to church? How can you continue to pray when all of these things are happening? Well, that's how our faith is built. That's how our faith is even displayed. You don't have to have faith when everything is good. When you got a pocket full of money, when, when, when your stomach full, your gas tank full, you, 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 you in good health you don't have to have no you have to have faith when things begin to go against what God has promised because God's promises are still sure and God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent if he said it he shall surely bring it to pass amen but once again praise the Lord and we thank God for all of you who are there on Facebook live we thank you those who are here on today as we prepare to just throw out the lifeline reminding the world that Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Jesus is the only way come on put your hands together at this time let's receive our devotional team with our scripture and our prayer as we go further in this morning's worship service our scripture this morning will be coming from Psalm 37 Four through six. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit the way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Morning, morning. God is good. Yes, he is. Let us uh, look to the Lord this morning for prayer. Oh, gracious and merciful Father, Lord, we come this morning humbly as we know how, oh God. Father, we come this morning on bending knees, oh God, asking that you touch your people, oh God. Father God, we know that we are in perilous times right now, Lord God, and some don't know which way to go. But we know that 
you are the answer. And we know that you are still the way. So, Father God, we come right now, Lord God, asking that whoever don't know is this their day to call upon your name to receive you in their hearts, oh God. Lord, our prayer is that they hear something that may change their mind and, and change their heart, oh God. Father, we just pray that we all come to the knowledge and the truth of who you are so that we may be blessed in your presence, oh God. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for the service that you have allowed us uh, to come together once again, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the word that will go forth, oh God, and we pray that every mind, oh God, and every ear be open to hear what thus saith the Lord. Father God, we thank you right now for the blood that has been shed for, on Calvary's cross that we may receive life eternal. Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord God, for those uh, who are watching by Facebook and those who are here, oh God. Father God, touch hearts and minds, oh God, that we may know that you are still on the throne. Lord, increase faith in these, this hour, oh God. Give us the endurance to run this race, that we may finish and we may hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. Lord, bless this service. Bless the man of God who's going to break bread on today, oh God. And Father God, we will be so careful to give you all honor and praise. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all sing along with us. I just, I just want to thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and thank him. Thank, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Well, come on, put those blessed hands together. Give God some praise. We are ready for the word of God on this morning. If you have your Bibles, go with us to the book of Psalms. Psalm 51, verse number 10. Psalm 51 and 10, and the word of God says, Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Just for a little while on this Super Bowl Sunday, I would like to speak from the subject, recovering fumbles. Somebody say recovering fumbles. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to share your word. Now, God, I pray for your anointing. Use me as your instrument that someone will be encouraged. Someone will, in the end, be saved. That someone will be lifted up and edified through your word. We speak it now. We believe it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Recovering fumbles. Have you ever messed up a good thing? You see... Every now and then, each of us will have a golden opportunity that probably won't be repeated too frequently. And sometimes that opportunity may involve a career opportunity, and sometimes it's a quest for a higher education. It could even be a nice car or a job or a promotion. Yes, many of us can recall when we really messed up or lost or nearly lost our good thing. Now, many years ago, the blues singer by the name of Etta James, she wrote a song about a man who had a loving and devoted wife, but he was never there for her. And even though she did everything to please him, he was always somewhere else. When the wife finally decided to leave him, she said these words. She said, your good thing is about to come to an end. 
And I'm sure that we can all relate to Edda James's words because at some point in our lives, we, we've had a good thing to slip right through our fingers. In other words, the child who has a comfortable room and, and, and video games and designer clothes and the best of everything has a good thing. But when a bad attitude or low grades or bad talk causes these things to be taken away, many parents can sing this song, your good thing is about to come to an end. Yes, all of us will mess up every now and then. And when we mess up in football language, we fumble. And just like a football player who had the ball in his hands with the golden opportunity to score a touchdown, yet he fumbles and drops the ball. You see, fumbles can be costly. And depending on the situation at the time of the fumble, they can be devastating, especially in a very important game like the Super Bowl. But let, just like winning is part of life, Fumbles are also a part of life. Yes, the greatest baseball players were, were also known for a large number of strikeouts. And the record book shows that some of the greatest basketball players, they missed more baskets than they actually scored. And each time there's a Super Bowl, many will remember the big plays, but, but they rarely remember that during a game where there's been no fumbles at all. And they seem to come at the worst part of the game. But while the great players mess up good things by fumbling, the record also, also shows that what made these great players great was their ability to recover some of their own fumbles and then they go on and win the game. And some of us may have fumbled many times in our lives, but I need to let somebody know that fumble recovery is a specialty of the Holy Ghost. Yes, the Spirit of God, he spends a lot of time teaching every believer how not to fumble. He teaches every believer how to hold on to the ball. But just in case we do fumble, the Holy Ghost also teaches us how to recover and get the ball back. And as born-again believers, we must understand that, that every human can, can fumble and mess up a good thing, but, but only God can give that good thing back to us. And since God is in the recovery and restoration business, no, no matter how bad we mess up, we can recover all of our fumbles. We're talking about recovering fumbles. Somebody say recovering fumbles. Just type it right there, recovering fumbles. But looking quickly at our text here this morning, this text focuses on David as he asked God to restore the joy of having a good relationship with him. Now, this psalm is the result of a time in David's life when he made a major mistake despite being given a golden opportunity. Now, the inscription of this psalm, if you have it in the Bible, at the top, the heading goes, a psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Yes, yes, David, he enjoyed a grand opportunity during his 40-year reign as king over Judah and Israel. Yes, he raised uh, the level of worship of God to a higher standard and he brought peace back to Jerusalem. So in the eyes of all the people, David was a very anointed and successful king. How in, in the midst of peace and prosperity, David fumbles the ball. Yes, yes, he became involved in a double sin of adultery and then murder while he was the king. The story of David's fumble has been told so many times that it has become legendary. Yes, you read it in the, in the Bible. You know how the story goes. He was, he was on his roof at the palace one day when his army had gone out to battle. And he saw this beautiful woman by the name of Bathsheba taking a bath. 
So he enters into an adulterous relationship with a married woman. You see, her husband Uriah was a soldier in King David's army. And he was away from home fighting for his nation. Well, lo and behold, a love child was conceived in this relationship. And David panicked and he tried to cover it up. So he ordered for Uriah to come home from the battle, hoping that he would sleep with his wife so that he could believe that the child was his own. But Uriah, the soldier, was so faithful and so committed to the battle that he wouldn't even go home to his wife. While the other man was out on the battlefield, how can I enjoy pleasure when men are out there fighting and dying for our nation? And that's where the king should have been in the first place. So to cover his sin up, David ordered Uriah to be put on the front line of the battle where he would possibly be the first to get killed. And when the news of Uriah's death reached King David, he felt he had safely covered for his sin. But then God sends a prophet to David by the name of Nathan. And Nathan approached David in a way that he couldn't deny the sin of both adultery and murder. Yes, in a prophetic moment, the prophet Nathan pointed a finger at the king and said, Thou art the man. And then after that, King David knew that his sin was uncovered. And it was at this point that David realized and he confessed that he had fumbled, that he had made a mistake. So he fell on his face before God and he penned these words in the 51st Psalm, which says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We're talking about recovering fumbles. Someone just type or say recovering fumbles. Exactly, exactly. What is a fumble and what causes fumbles to happen in our lives? Well, I need you to know that a fumble can only happen when someone has possession of the ball. Therefore, if a believer's fumble an opportunity, it means that they at least had possession of the opportunity. So, so, so in this case, it's, it's not of a blessing being sought but rather a blessing that was possessed and then it was lost. So a fumble is when we lose possession of something that God intended for us to have. And if the truth be told, many believers have fumbled just by haphazardly dropping the ball. In other words, we had it in our hands and we dropped it. And that's what happens with the prodigal son when he realized that after he wasted his inheritance in riotous living and when he found himself in a hawk pen, he realized that he had dropped the ball. And there was nobody else to blame but himself. And just like the prodigal son, even as a born again believer, we can find ourselves in a mess, in a hawk pen. And in spite of our knowledge and experience, we often make bad judgment calls in the heat of the moment. And that's one reason why the word of God teaches us to be always ready for reconciliation. Yes, always ready to forgive someone who has offended us because you never know when you may end up in a mess because even the best players can sometimes drop the ball we're talking about recovering fumbles somebody say recovering fumbles like I said number one fumbles happen by simply dropping the ball but then secondly sometimes fumbles can be forced yes sometimes an opponent can force a fumble the defense can execute a blitz and hit us in a way off guard that causes us to drop the ball, to fumble. Oh, it must be a horrible feeling to be a quarterback on a team and see 300-pound defenders attacking from every side. And sometimes when everything hits you at the same time, it can cause a fumble. 
That's why 1 Peter 5 and 8 warns us about the devil's blitz by saying, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, now, now that's just a fancy way of saying that the devil is always looking for an opportunity to force a fumble in your life. Oh yeah, he want to force a fumble in your career. He wants to force a fumble in your family. He wants to force a fumble in your finances and even in your spiritual life. So when a believer is winning in the game of life, the only chance the devil has is to force a fumble. That's why every believer should be sober-minded and vigilant to make sure that you're holding on to the ball. Even though you may be hit from every side, just hold on to the ball. Your defenders may pile up on you and try to crush you, but you need to hold on to the ball. Don't, don't drop the ball. Don't, don't let go of the ball and don't you dare give the ball away. Hold on. Talking about recovery, yeah. fumbles. Somebody say recovering fumbles. Sometimes fumbles happen when we drop the ball. Sometimes fumbles are forced. But then thirdly, number three, sometimes fumbles can cause turnovers. You see, the worst case scenario for a fumbled opportunity is to see your opponents recover the ball after you fumble. Yes, a turnover. A turnover occurs when we drop the ball and our opponents recover our loss. Therefore, fumbles can be costly. And Jesus told the parable of several men who were given talents and told them to use them in a way that would make the master proud. But in the end, one of the men failed to use his talents, so he hid it, he buried it. Now that was a fumble because the master took his talent and gave it to somebody else who would use it. And in a similar sense, fumbles can result in turnovers in life. Opportunities and good things that should have been ours can easily fall into the hands of others for the simple reason that we fumbled the ball. We had it had it in our hands, but we couldn't hold on to it. And every year, there are millions of people who watch their opportunities blossom in the hands of somebody else. Yes, they fumble the project at work, and somebody else turned around and received the promotion. Or even worse, they, they fumble a marriage, and someone else is enjoying the happy relationship that could have been theirs. Or if you can't say amen, say ouch. We're still talking about recovering fumbles. Somebody shout recovering fumbles. So finally... My brothers and sisters, we've seen the different ways that we can fumble the ball. We've seen how the ball can be dropped or, or taken from us and cause turnovers. But, but we need to remember one final thing on this Super Bowl Sunday. And that's how to recover your own fumble. Yes, we may drop the ball, but the enemy can't get in possession of our blessing if we know how to recover our own fumble. Yes, we may have messed up an opportunity, but all is not lost if we can recover our own fumble. And if we look closely at David's actions in the text, after he fumbled, we can find the secret on how to recover recover our own fumbles. Yes, David showed us a two-fold fumble recovery plan. It worked for him, and it will work for any born-again believer. And David's first step was to ask God to give him a clean heart. Somebody say a clean heart. A clean heart. Yes, he said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Now, a clean heart means to get rid of anything that's not pure. 
anything in your life that's not like God. So if I fumbled because my heart isn't right, then, then God give me a brand new heart. Or, or if I have fumbled because I hate somebody, then take away my hate and turn it into love. Or if I have fumbled because I've held a grudge against somebody, then take away my grudge and give me reconciliation. If I fumbled because I have impure motives, then take away my impurities and give me a divinely inspired motive. Or if I fumbled because I haven't shown mercy, then take away my vicious spirit and replace it with mercy and compassion. And I believe that when David asked the Lord for a clean heart, that God reached down in the spirit and he took away all of David's sins, the guilt and the shame, and he washed it white as snow. But, but, but then the second step that David implemented to recover from his fumble was to change his attitude and his spirit. Yes, he asked the Lord to renew a right spirit within me. Now, 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 to renew, it means to start all over again. To renew, it means to make new. And, and there are many believers who, who started their Christian journey with the right spirit. But somewhere along the way, they adopted a different kind of attitude and a wrong spirit. So here David decided that simply getting a clean heart wasn't good enough. He needed to go back to the point where his spirit was right with the Lord. In other words, David was saying, God, take me back. Take me back to the point where I found joy in my relationship with you. Look, Lord, take me back. Take me back to the point when I was excited about worship, excited about reading my word. Take me back to the point where I served the Lord with gladness. I entered into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Just, just take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place before I let this coronavirus hinder me from going to the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. So if I can wear a mask when I go to work, if I can wear a mask when I go to school, if I can wear a mask to the gas station, the grocery store, the doctor's office, and the restaurant, then I can wear a mask to the house of the Lord at least once a month until all this stuff is over. Yes, yes, some of us need to go back to the place where we were excited about serving the Lord. I believe that's what the songwriter had in mind when he wrote, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to where I first believed. Amen. Yes, if you want to recover your own fumble, you need to ask the Lord to take you back to the place where you lost your joy, you lost your zeal, you lost your hope, your love, and your peace. You see, the game's not over when you fumble the ball. Because we serve a God of another chance. Oh yes, he'll pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus because he died for you on Calvary's cross. Just call on the name of Jesus because he rose for you with all power in his hands and he's seated at the right hand of God. The Father Almighty make an intercession for you, praying for you, praying for your peace, praying for your strength, praying for you to overcome that fear because God has not given you a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind. Lord, take me back where I saw the choir 
I sing in the praises of God. God, take me back where the praise and worship team will usher us into the presence of God. God, take me back where Ty was on the drums. Gabriel was on the keyboard. We had cameras in the church. God, take me back. And he's going to do it. Yes, he's going to do it. If we trust him, we're going to get through this. If we stand on this word, this too shall pass. Yes, God is a good God. And he wants all of us to recover from all of our fumbles. So my brothers and sisters, this is how we recover fumbles in our lives. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise.